Hi, everybody. I am going to share with you everything that I talked about in church this morning because today is Halloween. I'm going to read to you the title, which is The Ghost of Dreams Past. And that's a play on word because we're also going to talk about the ghosts of dreams past. We're going to talk about the things that we may have lost. A perfectly creepy day to talk about the things we have lost and how we emerge anew. Is closure a myth? What about just closing a door and opening another? We will explore different ways to take back our control of our past and future by confronting the ghosts of the past. I'm not going to be looking at the comments until the end. I'm just going to speak and share and I hope you are able to stay with me. Okay. So I'm actually wearing uh, this tiara today because this was uh, my, my, my Halloween costume for preaching this morning. And this was in honor of my friend Tiara, whose birthday was yesterday. And she died last year and she would have been 30 yesterday. And that was really hard because I learned during that time, well, well before that, my mom had run into her mom and I knew she had a son, but we hadn't met yet. And my mom and her mom were talking at the grocery store. My mom called and told me and said, you know, I ran into Tiara's mom today and she couldn't remember what your son's name was, but thought it was similar to her grandson. Her son's name is Nehemiah and my son's name is Josiah. And they had this moment where they were like, oh my gosh, those names are so similar. And we have these sons with these biblical names that that might play together one day. And so my mom told me, and I remember when I found out she died, the first thing I, I thought was now me and, and her and our sons with biblical names will never play together. And so I knew that there was a loss there and I knew that there was something I lost with it, but oftentimes we can't put our finger on it. And so, I want to tell you all a story that I tell way too often, but it's one of my favorites. This is supposed to be the original story of the mustard seed. And it goes like this. If you if you can hear grunting, that is my, my, my newborn that is on my lap. So the original story of the mustard seed, I actually heard this story in a book about grief while I was training to become a minister. And the story goes like this. A woman had lost her son and she was walking around town holding him in her arms all day into the afternoon just telling every person that she ran into I've lost my son can you help this is the worst thing to ever happen and of course we believe this is definitely up there if not the worst thing that could happen but the difficult part was that she kept asking people if they could help bring him back and so eventually they, they, they huddled together and they said, we have to do something, let's talk to her. And they went over and they talked to her and they sent her away to the shaman who's up in the hills. And they said, take your son, take yourself, make your way up the hill, it'll be worth it. And so she goes up the hill it's you know it's uncleared it's it's brush is overgrown and it's it's in the in the woods and she finally sees a little light in the cottage and she knocks on the door and she says look and and he says let me guess you're here because they told you i can help you bring your son back and she said yeah can you help and he said yeah i can but first i'm going to need something my special elixir takes mustard seeds but only special ones and, and there's nothing that really grows up here so i need you to go back bring me mustard seeds from anybody that has them in a home that has an experience lost it has to be a house unscathed by loss and she goes oh okay that should be easy and she goes back down the hill still holding her son and she knocks and knocks on each door, one arm, that is my son, pretty sure pooping on my lap. <laughs> she knocks on each door and everyone says, well, you know, I, I do have a few mustard seeds from last season, but I, 
I lost my 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 husband or I lost my mom and you know the next person says well I you know I, I have some mustard seeds but I also lost my whole my whole business I had a tavern and it went out of business I don't know if that counts and so she got the mustard seeds she thought would work and went back up the hill because it was getting so dark that she said you know what I, at this point I'm not going to make it unless I go she goes up the hill holding her son and she knocks on the door with one arm and says this is all I have Unfortunately, I could not find mustard seeds from any house because everybody in town has experienced the loss. And he said, that's your elixir. Go bury your son. And of course, she went into the brush and by the stream and she performed a ritual that she needed to bury her son. And I tell that story so often because when I first learned it, I, I realized that that story is not about the death, but it's about loss. It's about the universality of loss. And in my main, my main um, spiritual practice is Buddhism and loss and suffering is so universal. And so I love that story, but something hit me in this last year when I was thinking about my friend who I just knew we would be together again one day, we've celebrated everything under the sun together we rented a prom together and i have pictures of i mean we rented a limo to go to prom together and i have pictures of us and our dates and our friends and we've been to times square together we've been to uh, every volleyball team i played on we've played together off season during the season whatever i i just knew that our sons would play together too and so something hit me in this last year after thinking about that, after starting to work with COVID and all of the things and the people we lost, after being home and, and trying to deal with my issues without the gym and the people that I usually go see, I used to go to the gym six days a week and go see people whose names I realized I didn't even know. After all of that, something hit me about that story. After having a son myself, and now I have two, something hit me finally about that story. Not only is that story about the universality of loss but that story described her holding her son and i realize this now and especially i lost my cousin two years ago he was young and he got in a car accident and i realized from losing a child that experience and i realized from losing my friend not my my experience secondhand experience Finally, that that story was also about losing her son, because when you lose things, sometimes you lose things with it. Not only does a child die, but the dreams of who they become, the, the, the things that you thought were going to happen, all of those things come and go with the person. And so that's like the story of Christmas past where he has to look and peer and 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 deal with all the things that he had done and all the, the 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 mindsets that he had held and he had to look them straight in the face and say was i really like this did i really do this that is similar to what i'm talking about now but when we have ghosts of dreams past things that potentially we wanted to do things that didn't turn out things that the pandemic took from us things that were supposed to be one way and look very different like relationships or you know for 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 me we were going to um to buy a house and we we are going to buy a house but it looks so different than it did before so we get into a project and we say this is our idea of success and that doesn't pan out or we get married and we say that this is our idea of a good marriage but that doesn't pan out or we move to a new place or start a new friendship and it doesn't pan out sometimes we can't put our finger on what is wrong with the goodness we can have a blessing and still be unhappy or we have something good and it still feel bad there's so much unhappiness sometimes in the joy and so much loss sometimes in the game that we can't put our finger on exactly what is bothering us we just know that it doesn't feel quite right but here's the thing grieving and mourning is different grief is the thing that happens grief is a moment grief is a feeling grief is an instance and you can have continuation of that instance that turns into grieving but that's when we get into mourning 
Mourning is honoring your grief. Mourning is action long term that says, I see that this is sad and I'm going to continue to see that it's sad. I see that I lost it and I'm going to continue to give sight to it, continue to give my time and energy to it. I had a teacher in um, elementary school that wore black every day for the whole year that I was with her. She was Filipino and she never said anything. I mean, I, she, I think she told some students, but I didn't really know. But then one day she finally came in in blue and I said, what? It, it finally dawned on me that she had black on this whole time. And she said, oh, I was grieving the loss of my mother. And that's what we do in our culture. But look at all of the energy it took to grieve by wearing black every day. That means she went through her blue shirts or pink shirts and picked black. That means she had to pick a short sleeve shirt um, when it was summer and a long sleeve shirt when it was winter. That means maybe she had a quarter limb shirt. Maybe she had to pick a sweater that goes with the black shirt. She had to keep dog hair off the shirt and lint off the shirt. And all of the things that went into honoring that grief is mourning. And so my therapist has had me write a eulogy for the marriage I thought I was gonna have that was a little less cookie cutter and it turns out I'm just a basic girl. <laughs> I have had to do whole funerals for the things I lost during COVID. My therapist had me do a funeral for, the, for what I lost during COVID. I couldn't put my finger on why I'm so anxious, but I'm so anxious because I used to go to the gym six days a week and now I'm not and now I don't know what to do with my energy and the people I used to talk to and the people I was looking forward to updating. There, I had to, to grieve that, the action that we put into mourning is what helps us move through it. But here's the thing, many cultures do this so differently. They celebrate life. I'm black, we celebrate life. I grew up Baptist, we celebrate life. A lot of African countries sing and dance and, and celebrate life for a week by African cultures and, and, and um, countries and cultures. There are um, people, Jewish people who sit Shiva and, and not only do they sit, they also tell stories. They also, you know, honor the, the life of the person. This holiday, um, Halloween, is also going right into the Day of the Dead and, and, and Dia de los Muertos, as well as All Souls Day. Well, I, I went to Catholic school where we celebrated that. And in, in Dia de los Muertos, there's an ofrenda, an offering, where we leave memories and pictures and recipes and things about the life of the person, the celebration. And so during that, we continue to actively mourn then. We go back to the offering every year. We rebuild it, ofrenda. We rebuild and we and we honor continuously. My cousin who died left a, a, a brother behind and he wears a dog tag with his name and every day he honors him. Every day of the week he honors him. If it's on social media or whatever, if it's just private, he honors the life of him. He says, long live King John. We honor, we celebrate. And that is a way of getting through mourning. That is a way to continue to mourn. Because what happens is in order for us to do that, we have to honor the grief and name it. We have to say, this is what I lost. This is the thing I lost. We have to put our finger on what we lost in order to mourn it. And sometimes we get stuck in these weird feelings where we can't even celebrate or be happy about what's going on because we can't put our finger on what we lost. We can't call a thing a thing. We've lost normalcy because of COVID. We've lost people because of COVID. We've lost our way of, of, of relating to people because of COVID. We've lost physical touch because of COVID. And yes, we're at different levels of accepting where we are in the pandemic or not, but the fact is, is that we all collectively are experiencing a loss and without being able to put our finger on, without being able to name it and call a thing a thing, it just hurts and we don't know where. We don't know where. Sometimes the best thing someone can do to hold space for us or hold space for ourselves is just say, where does it hurt? Where does it hurt? 
and I don't say that often, but I've had to say it recently. I said it to one of my friends last week, and I had, a, I, I saw someone say it to someone else last year, and in the in the weight, the 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 shoulders release and the jaw release of me thinking about being able to just say where does it hurt, and within COVID or sometimes when you lose someone or sometimes when you 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 know you these opportunities just keep going past. It hurts everywhere. Right now, the earth. If we ask the where it hurts, it hurts everywhere. The day you find out the worst news, sometimes it hurts everywhere. And sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes we can put our finger on exactly what's bothering us if we decide that we're going to let it live instead of trying to move on from it. If we decide we're going to have the grief and then we're going to mourn, then we can start moving into acceptance and actual putting a ritual in place to move through the feelings. Me and my husband were, um, were you know, we were trying to work on on this this house thing for the last three years, and we finally last night we were up until five o'clock in the morning, and we um, we didn't know like what else to do. And we had a conversation, and we finally got I mean over over hours, we finally got to the place where we said, you know, let, let's just let's just build from the ground up, let's get a place, let's fix it up, sweat equity, and we were excited. We were going back and forth, and, you know, every five minutes I was finding something, he was finding something. We were saying, sweat equity, babe, sweat equity. And I knew I had to preach this morning. I said, I'm going to regret staying up all night with you, but the sweat equity excites me. I'm not sure I want to have another baby. We had talked about having another baby, and I'm three months in, and my I had a C-section, and he had to, to put stuff in my spine, and my neck still hurts, and my back still hurts, and you know what? I've decided to start giving my clothes away and every time I pack them up, I say, this is not for me, this is for you. This is for you. This is for you. That's repetitive action in the direction of grief that allows us to mourn. And see what happens when we don't want to mourn, when we just have the grief and then it happens, trauma just locks up and we can't move on from it. We think we moved on from it. We don't understand what's going on with us. This is what's happening. I practice Buddhism and, and the most important thing is to be here. Suffering is universal, but what about being present? And if we are tensing up and thinking about the next thing that's going to happen, this is too good and I don't know if this is going to last, then we're there. That's anxiety. If we're, oh my gosh, but I can't even enjoy this because of everything that I've lost, everything that's happened so far, then we're there behind us and that's depression. So we can't be here because we're either there or we're back there. So then we're really not anywhere because this moment keeps moving and we have to stay here and think about the things that we've gained and think about the things that we that we can celebrate in between that. And I'm going to tell you why. It's not to move over the mourning. We really do have to mourn. We really, I mean the grief. We do really do have to feel the grief. But here's the thing. My therapist always tells me when we celebrate, we take ourselves out of survival mode. When we stop and say, this is good right here, right now, and this is where I am, we're not there, we're not there. We're not anxious, we're not depressed, we're here. Many of you know I'm going back to the CDC Foundation starting tomorrow morning, and I left the CDC Foundation after a year contract. Um, I knew I was having a baby as well, so I didn't apply right away. They have a very fair and equitable process of rehiring people, which I did not realize. So it took me forever to get back in the right way. I couldn't even sneak in. And I'm finally going back. But <laughs> I thought I got more than one job as well as the job that I did get with the department where I was in the health department and the funding got rescinded. But I had a piece of cake for that job and I have another one. And all the other ones I thought I, I got, I celebrated. My husband got interviewed for a job and we were going to relocate to take the job because he absolutely got that job. He nailed it and we celebrated. And then the recruiter came back from a business trip and told him that she realized that somebody else hired somebody else instead. Was the celebration wasted or was the celebration necessary for us to be where we are right now, which was a minute ago right there, right here, right now, this feels good. Right here, right now, this feels good. Right here, right now, this feels good. So I'm not back there depressed about what I didn't get. And I'm not anxious thinking that right here, right now, it's going to be gone because of the next thing that could happen. There is no other shoe to drop. There is only right now. 
and we have to sink into the happiness and to the ritual and the things that make us understand where we are right now. And so I want to invite you as a way to do that. You say, I grieve the loss of blank, but I celebrate blank. I grieve the loss of my friend Tierra, but I celebrate all of the pictures we took and I still got them. I grieve the loss of my cousin Jonathan, but I celebrate how funny he was because his inside jokes still pop up in my daily life. And I think about the joy of life. I grieve the loss of potentially not having another baby, but I celebrate my three children. I grieve the loss of all of the lives of COVID that we have lost, but I celebrate new ways of being in community. I grieve the loss of jobs I didn't get, but I celebrate the one I did because it was just for me, just for me. I grieve the loss of the jobs I didn't get, but I celebrate the opportunity to practice interviewing. And that's how we create a ritual around this so that we can be right here, right now, when we need to be. And we can sink into the celebration that allows us to gain perspective that allows us to mourn, that allows us to really take our grief and turn it into something new. And so thank you all for being with me today. I I hope that you have a really good Halloween. I want to make sure that this is something that you can listen to quickly and reflect on more than one time. And so I'm going to make sure that it's not too long by ending it, but I welcome your comments and I welcome your support and I hope you have a beautiful day and to my girl Tierra, who I will never see again, may I see you again. I shame, amen. And may it be so. Mm